Hello everybody. Today is the next lecture devoted to the Russian native breeds. The topic of the day is the Caucasian Shepherd Dog. Also a very interesting and in some ways, I would say, unique breed. Uh, and as usually, before to start analyzing the breed standard, I would like you to tell about the method I am going to use when giving the comments. This method is based on the model approach. What do I mean? The model approach includes two models, biomechanical model of the dogs and harmonic model of the dogs. The first model is devoted to the soundness, as well as the second one to the harmony. These models are resulted by, by long years researches done by me during 24 years from 1963 to 1987 and are based on the specifics of the Soviet breeding strategy. According to that strategy, the only breeding commissions of each breed club uh, were in charge of breeding plan a year. And since 1963, during almost 30 years, I have been chairman of that commission, first in Doberman Club and later on in the Schnauzer Club. In some periods, that plan included per year about 300 to 400 broad bitches. So you can imagine the um, size of statistics we operated. This statistics was really huge. And hypothesis appeared during the breeding process were checked for trustfulness. Biomechanical model of the dog is the integrity of postulates, and harmonic model of the dogs is integrity of harmonious proportions. Later on, I defended the doctoral dissertation in biology named Dog Confirmation Improvement through biomechanical model of the dogs. So, the previous hypothesis became afterwards status of scientifically proven facts. Therefore, you can fully trust them and use in your practice. Both biomechanical model and harmonical model are of practical value. What do I mean? Judges can find here universal reference points which help them to increase the objectivity of the assessment. And breeders can find here the selective algorithm for the acceleration of breeding progress. So, this is the short introduction. Now, briefly about these models. In front of you at the screen, you can see the real dog from outside and the same dog from inside. There is a lot of different lines and some angles. And now, step by step, I will explain what is included here. So, as I told you, integrity of postulates. And the first postulate named 211. Two units fall on the thoracic part of the spine, one unit fall on the lumbar part of the spine, as well as the last one unit falls on the sacrum of the spine. I have to accentuate that the thoracic part of the spine and nothing else uh, name will be actual back. So, as the back or actual back, 
I will consider the only thoracic part of the spine, from the first thoracic vertebra to the last one, thirteenth one. Next postulate name is a ninety degrees angle by the axis of the pendulum. The term pendulum I use quite conditionally. This is the angle which is created by two lines. One is along the shoulder blade median line and another one connects hip and iliac tuber. And this is a point of intersection and this is a 90 degrees angle. The next postulate the, post, uh, the principle of two horizontals, these green lines you can see in front of you. The first green line, the upper green line, connects humerus scapular joint and hip joint. The second one connects elbow joint and knee joint. And they are parallel and horizontal. The third postulate's name is principle of two verticals. You can see this is the first vertical, this is the second vertical. Here you can see that the elbow joint is placed exactly under the withers top point and the knee joint is placed under the tail set. Let me please remind about these postulates separately, step by step. Uh, I repeat it. Principle of two horizontal lines. You can see these two joints belong to one horizontal line, as well as another couple of joints belong belongs to another horizontal line. So, one more time, please look at this picture and find out that the elbow joint is placed exactly under the top of the with us, and knee joint is placed exactly under the tail set. I will use this picture from the left later on when explaining, when giving the comments to this postulate. Um, let me say to you that I do not need to prove these statements because, because postulate is a statement which does not need to be proved. And uh, one more postulate, please. So, the length of the body uh, from the sternum to the buttock and distance between the front and rear legs uh, are equal. I have to um, emphasize that the hind legs should be uh, put in correct stance. Um, Hind leg should be placed behind to the vertical rear pasta, as well as the front legs should be put under the body as uh, deep as possible. So now it is a time to give some comments to this postulate, and uh, I would like to come back to the first one, to the general picture. The very first postulate, which name is 211, is the number one postulate, not because on the, uh, of the order, but because of the value. It is a basic uh, index, uh, and uh, if it is principal use the inbreeding or dog you have to judge 
has these proportions, that means that you can find out several very positive, very important features of its building. First of all, dock will be compact. Strong time, uh, so st uh, top line will be strong. Deep will be, uh, chest will be deep, sorry. And uh, angulations in front and in the rear will be correct. And they will be in balance. Moreover, format of the body will be approximately uh, approach uh, one more time strong top line it's easy to understand what is this compact body I have to uh, explain uh, this definition compactness is provided by the by the short loin it is a short coupled body. Chest part and everything which is in front of the chest, as well as the rear part, are connected with a short segment, which is a loin. If the loin is lengthened, the dog will lose compactness. Short loin is provided by this characteristic. So we can see what we are able to find out. But with our hands, with our fingers, we can check it if it is provided. And then if it's like that, you can say, that the dog is really compact. It is a confirmation of your visual impression. Uh, deep chest, it's easy in, uh, in our mm, uh, uh, tradition. The breastbone should uh, reach the elbow level. A lot of positive features a lot and uh, they are in reality due to this proportion later on i will explain you uh, the deep sense of this ratio but it couldn't be done in the framework of the biomechanics it belongs to the field of harmony, so please be patient and, and wait. As well as here, 211 will find also its explanation. So, very important principle, basic principle, is 211. The shoulder blade, median line, and the line crossing hip and iliac tuber uh, create the angle. And this is angle 90 degrees. Uh, these lines provide very specific uh, condition. Um, they uh, uh, create boundaries of the span of the limbs at the trot when dog is close to ground when the dog is close to be landed and uh, moreover these lines create the preconditions of the equality of the front and hind stride. Uh, and uh, you, you know that the balance of the movement should be 
for sure provide it with this equality. This equality is the required if we are saying about the movement that the movement are balanced. It is a required condition. Besides that, um, there is one more conclusion. You can see that the slant of the shoulder blade and slay slant of the this pelvis bone, so iliac bone, they slant is not independent, and the dependency is based on the angle of 90 degrees. So, this line and this line are important at least for two things I have told about. Okay, I, I can send something. Uh, you can see a red vertical line, and this is the line where the center of gravity is located. You can see dog in movement, um, on the move. This is a trotting dog. This dog is the same dog, and uh, you can see that Two horizontal lines are provided. That the span of the limbs inscribes in this 90 degree angle, which define the boundaries of the throat, boundaries of the span of the dog, which is close to be landed. You can see here this red line and find that uh, opposite legs are converging to the base of this line. Here is the center of gravity and uh, here is the base of vertical line. You can see that the front stride and rear stride are equal. Moreover, you can see that the vertical line dropped from the eye uh, is coming to the paw of the front leg at the moment of landing. I will explain everything a bit later, but before these horizontal lines, which we found now when Doc was on the move, are in standing position. Uh, what do they give? Look, these lines, when Doc is trotting, are oscillating in uh, antiphase, is oscillating contrary. Um, and uh, hip joint goes up so much, declining from the horizontal uh, level, as well as the knee joint will goes down the same distance down and the same distance up. So the mutual oscillation uh, compensate oscillation of each other. That's why the spinal column is remaining level. And the disturbances arising from the jumping and falling uh, almost do not transmit it to the spinal column or are transmitted being very softened. So, principle of two verticals. Uh, 
in the previous uh, picture you saw that the uh, humerus capula joint and hip joint belong to one horizontal line as well as another couple or elbow joint and knee joint belong to another horizontal line. And uh, this previous postulate uh, is able to block overbuilt construction of the dog because the rump is not coming up due to a mutual compensation of the oscillation of these two horizontal lines. But previous postulate couldn't give the dog the optimal meanings of the angulations, either front or rear. It is, it could be given by the postulate named two verticals. Why? Please take a look. The elbow is moved backwards under the body and the elbow joint is placed as far as possible towards the rear. That's why the angulation of humerus scapula is as much as possible close to 90 degrees. Of course it is not 90 degrees, but tendency is provided by the slant or slope of the upper arm. And in this case, uh, knee joint uh, is forwarded so much that tail set and uh, uh, this joint belong to one vertical line. That's why the upper thigh and uh, sciatic bone can create 90 degrees angle, which is extremely important because 90 degrees provides the most economical function of this joint. Not only of this joint, 90 degrees here could be also the optimal meaning, but in reality we have uh, something about 100, 110 degrees. The full explanation of this principle you can find out in my book, which name is Dog Confirmation in its and its Evaluation. And this book is available in UK in our dogs. So, so should, you, should you understand deeply the old details, please uh, read this book. So, the two verticals provide the optimal meanings of the front and the rear angulations. Moreover, uh, please take a look at the left picture. This segment is placed exactly under the top line ads. Yes? So, if we neglect this slope and look inside, we will find out, as we told already before, that the um, spinal column is the column is also uh, almost horizontal. That's why these two segments are practically equal in length. And uh, this is also very important because in this case you have mobile support of the spine in the beginning and at the end. And this support also is able to soften um, disturbances arising uh, during the uh, jumping uh, and uh, falling. 
As I told you the length of the body from the sternum, let me emphasize, not from the uh, humeroscapular joint, but from the sternum, which is in front of this joint. And if you uh, neglect it and measure the length of the body from the disjoint to the buttocks, then you will lose part of a body which is in front of humeral scapula and it will be not true. So, this length and that length are equal. Why? It's easy to explain. Let us imagine that a dog, dog's limbs, are deprived of any, any angulations. Uh, let us imagine that they look like uh, legs of the chair. No angulations at all. Then, it is very obviously, just a moment, <coughs> that the length of the body and distance between its leg, legs are absolutely equal. Now, let us come back to the real dogs with the angulated limbs. And if we imagine that the... Uh, uh, sorry, something else. Uh, now, you can see that the dog is moved forward regarding front and hind legs. And if we imagine that dog will be moved differently regarding these legs, front and rear. It will mean that uh, dog will have strides in front and the rear not equal. That's why it's easy that this distance and length of the body have to be equal. So now, uh, Doc, on the move, please. Time to explain something additionally. So, uh, this bordering which uh, create um, span, it's easy, yeah? And uh, equality of the front and hind strides, it's presented. This red line uh, value. At this moment, uh, dog support is provided by, by this hind leg. At this point, which is placed exactly under the center of grain. The full explanation of this principle uh, could be uh, found uh, out in the theoretical mechanics, which is uh, not the topic of the day. But easy explanation uh, anyway could be found. So please try to imagine that you are standing in the bus and uh, you don't want to be uh, much wobbling. Where should be the place with the minimum wobbling? Of course, in the center of gravity. The same here is here. So the minimum of wobbling could be found when these hind legs are converging to the base of the vertical line where center of gravity is placed. And uh, last criterion, which can um, be used as the criterion of the extended trot at this stage of movement, when dog is close to the ground. <coughs> Vertical line from the eye to the paw of the front 
leg uh, is not accidentally mentioned here because the eye is located a little bit forward regarding the ear where vestibular apparatus is placed and this is an acoustic center of equilibrium so that's why it's easy that dog should be landing uh, just a little before the equilibrium will be mm, reached like by human we when we are saying watch your step this is the same okay okay now uh, I can come back to the uh, beginning as I promised judges really can have the reference points which can help them to upgrade the objectivity when uh, evaluating dog confirmation with the hands they can check if the ratio is provided they can understand if the loin lumbar part is really one quarter of the spine they can provide they can found and i hope can provide that these two couples of joints are placed according to these two green lines and the conclusion is in easy there is balance between front and rear angulations something i have to add um, in standard of course i could say about that when reading the standard but uh, maybe it would be not a bad idea to repeat it so according to this ratio the sacrum or rump or upper part of the croup should be short also one quarter of the spine and in many sta standards it's written that the croup should be long or rather long and uh, there are no any contradictions because length of the croup is provided by the length of the pelvic bones and especially of the sciatic bone so short sacrum which is the upper part of the croup and the rather long croup are not contradictive uh, and the last what could be easily found when judging you can immediately uh, find from the looking at the dog from the side if the elbow joint is under the withers and stifle is under the tail set that is easy so you have to use these reference points and be sure that your uh, verdict your decision will be objective so the value of the biomechanical model is uh, now easy to understand but when we are looking at the dog without any knowledge of its um, harmony we are able from the nature to evaluate at the instinctive level if dog is beautiful or, or ugly for example and uh, this is a very interesting question how could we do that and the answer is simple because of the gift given from above given by god that's why we are able to evaluate from our nature without any knowledge this beauty that's mean that means that human eyes are in tune with the 
harmony. And what does it mean, harmony? And harmony is a very special feature. And uh, about that, I will tell you right now. Why am I doing that? Why is it not enough uh, to trust our eyes um, tuned uh, um, with the harmony from the nature? Because different people are in tuned, are in tuned differently. Some people are gifted uh, to be tuned um, very um, precisely. Other people, roughly. That's why our visual impressions is based on our subjective uh, feelings. But my, I, my aim, my purpose, is to explain you what is the objective uh, matter. How um, dog, we are saying now about the dogs, even this matter, even this topic could be uh, applied to a lot of things around us uh, and on. Uh, this is another another matter. Uh, so, my idea, my purpose, is to find out the harmonic proportions of the dog conformation. And uh, as the tool for that, I use the, the golden section. The golden section is uh, the universal form building principle of harmony, which was well known from the ancient times, well known in the ancient Egypt, in the ancient Greece, in the Renaissance time, and later on, and used by many different uh, uh, occupations representatives. They could be architects, they could be sculptors, they could be musicians, they could be doctors in uh, very different fields of the human knowledge. Uh, and the golden section as the principle of um, extreme and mean ratio was formulated three centuries before Christ by Euclid. And according to Euclid, the golden section is division of the segment O1 into unequal parts is divided by point X. And in this case, the biggest part of the segment to the smallest one should be equal to the whole segment to the biggest part. You can see, biggest part is one. Uh, no, 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 the whole segment length is one. The biggest part is X. So biggest parts, part is X and the smallest part is one minus X. This proportion could be easy, easily transformed to the um, square equation. And its positive root will be this number. If we calculate this number for the third approximation, we'll find out this number, uh, more roughly this one, and uh, final, the most rough approximation will be 0 0.6, or which is the same, 3 to 5. Now a little bit about the story. Um, initially in the Renaissance time, the uh, name of this principle was different. name of this principle was La Proportia Divina, or Divine Proportion. 
proportion given by God. And this was the name of the book written by a scientific monarch, which name was Luca Pacioli. He lived in 16th century. And uh, according to his idea, he, um, he described 12 um, properties of this La Proporzia Divina. And uh, his concept was that the La Proporzia Divina is the universal law of the harmony. Leonardo da Vinci, who illustrated this book, renamed this La Proporzia Divina and gave the name Golden Section. Originally it was Sectio Aureo. And after that, namely this name, uh, became famous. So, this was part of the story. Another part started four centuries before. In 12th century, another mathematician, also Leonardo, but Fibonacci, born in Pisa, was solving one problem outside of our topic. Uh, and uh, he uh, discovered sequence. Look, what is the sequence? 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, and on. It was very easy, easily built. 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, and on. What is interesting, if we modify this sequence like this, we divide each previous uh, member of the sequence to the next one. One, one second, two, third, three, fifth, five, eighth, and on. The limit of this sequence will be the same number. Golden section. And you can find out this number 3 to 5, which we calculated as the most uh, rough approximation of the golden section. In our practice, it will be enough uh, if, we will, if we consider 3 to 5 as the golden section, because when we are measuring the dogs, our mistakes exceeds uh, the, I would say, tail of this uh, number. And now I would like to direct your attention to one, in my opinion, extremely important moment, which I would call moment of truth. Please take a look and these three numbers I highlighted in red. One, one, two. Or opposite. Two, one, one. In the reverse order, I find immediately the proportions of the top line of the dog. And now it is quite easy to understand that this three numbers create at the basic level the initial tuning dot confirmation to the golden section. Without these three numbers, the sequence could not be built and its modification could not reach the perfection which is equal to this number. So, this are, this two, this three numbers, two, one, one, are absolutely required for the top line construction, for the top line ratio.
So the top line should be divided um, by its anatomical divisions in the ratio two one one when two units fall on the actual back of thoracic part of the spine, one unit falls on the lumbar part, and one unit falls on the sacrum or rump. Now, I believe that uh, my previous explanation um, concerning the biomechanics of the dog conformation can uh, have another um, sense, another reason, another value after this discovery, I would say. I have to add something else. Biomechanical, biomechanical model of the dogs is valid for the majority of the breeds. There are some exceptions, but the Caucasian Shepherd dog do not belong to these exceptions. It belongs to the majority of the breeds where the biomechanical and harmonic uh, dogs, model of the dogs, are valid. So, now it's time to go to the topic of our day. Uh, and I am ready to read the standard. And from time to time, take a break using knowledge uh, I set out to you. So, but before, before I will do that, I will tell you about the harmonic proportions. And uh, and please uh, give me the proportion number one. Depth of the chest from the elbow joint to the top of the withers and the length of the top line from the first thoracic vertebra to the tail set create golden section. Let me direct your attention that I measure from the elbow joint, but not from elbow, elbow ulna. Joint is functioning. Length of the chest to the length of the body also create golden section. And uh, one more time, let me remind you that I measure this length and that length in front from the sternum and in case of ribcage length the end is here where last rib crosses this red line. So, uh, you can uh, re remember segment O1, O1 point X, the whole body length to the length of the chest is the same as the length of the chest to the length of the rest. So, if it is a uh, three, to five, uh, it is correct, but also this is three to five. Whole body length to the length of the chest is the same as whole chest length to the length of the rest. Length of the body to the length of the diameter is 3 to 5. 
we see in front of us projection of the dog silhouette on the vertical plane parallel to longitudinal axis of the body. So when you are measuring this uh, distance, you uh, should uh, understand that um, it should be considered the projection of this segment to the vertical plane I told about. Height at elbow, please pay attention, elbow joint, and sum of head length and neck length, great golden section. And the last one, a girth of the muzzle to the girth of the skull, great golden section. Uh, let me uh, give some comments to this last one. The Caucasian dog should be a very strong dog with a powerful bite. And let me tell you now that the golden section uh, have extremely special feature. The construction which are built according to the golden section are not only beautiful for the eyes, but they have optimal function. What is the function in this case? Bite. And why it could be realized with this ratio? Let me remind you the egg, which was uh, taken as the symbol of perfection by Fabergé, when uh, yeah, I mean the Easter egg. Uh, probably uh, you know that the egg is practically impossible to destroy in your hands if you are squeezing evenly. So, beautiful shape and extremely durable construction uh, match each other. Why? Because of golden section. Because the cross diameter of egg to the longitudinal diameter of egg are three to five. And the same is provided here, three to five. So the bite will be most powerful with this ratio in between. Ну что же, мы, наверное, готовы к тому, чтобы перейти к чтению стандарта. I believe that it is a real time to go to the standard of the Caucasian Shepherd Dog. As I promised, from time to time, when it's needed, I will use the knowledge uh, I set out this time. So, brief historical summary. The Caucasian Shepherd Dog is considered to be the breed taking its origin from the ancient Caucasian dogs. The breed's expansion covers territories from the Caucasian Range and the steppe region of southern Russia. The evaluation, uh, sorry, the evolution of the breed was not only a result of natural selection, but also influenced by nations that inhabited the Caucasian region. Historically, Caucasian shepherd dogs were used for the guarding and safekeeping of herds, flocks, and uh, dwellings from beasts of prey and predators. The first mention of a large Molossoid dogs used by the army of the Armenian Tsar Tigran II dates from the first century before Christ. Selection work with the breed started in the USSR in the 1920s. Um, obligatory qualities, qualities such as the physical power, self-confidence, fearlessness, sharply developed hearing 
good sight and a dense and waterproof coat have been cultivated in the process of the selection. All these qualities, as well as endurance, allows people to use the Caucasian Shepherd dogs in all kinds of climatic conditions, including the most severe ones. Now, general appearance. The Caucasian Shepherd dog is a harmonious build, large, strong dog with a plenty of bone and powerful musculature system of a slight rectangular form. Um, the term rectangular uh, was used uh, as it is a typical uh, term in different standards. But uh, the concrete sense of it will, uh, will be given a little bit uh, later. So it's uh, moderately from slight to moderately uh, elongated uh, body dog. So slightly long bodied dog to moderately long bodied dog. The sexual dimorphism is well pronounced. Males are masculine with developed, uh, well developed with us and a bigger head in the comparison with the females. They are also more massive, bigger, and often shorter in the body than the females. In dogs with longer coat variety, males have a distinctly pronounced mane. Important proportions. The body length exceeds the height at with us by three to eight percent. <coughs> this is much more concrete than to say rectangular, because rectangular could be uh, used in a different sense. Remember Dachshund or Basset Hound or German Shepherd or some someone uh, breed else. And even uh, um, square-body dog is also rectangular. It is a, a particular case of rectangular construction. So, more um, precisely would say how much the body length exceeds the height at with us. From 3 to 8 by Caucasian. The length of the four legs averages 50 to 52 of, of the height at with us. Stop at this moment, please. Uh, we usually measure height at with us at the level of the alna, elbow alna. And if we measure like this at the level of the joint, it will be short, so it will be really middle of this distance, or exactly 50% of the height at with us. Uh, a little bit later on, I will explain to you about this ratio, where one and one are noticed. Um, the length of the skull correlates with the length of the muzzle as 3 to 5. Uh, uh, very sorry. Uh, 3 to 2. 2 to 3. 2 to 5 or 3 to 5. 2 and 3. One and a half times shorter than the skull. Behavior and temperament. Behavior is steady, active, self-confident, fearless and independent. The Caucasian Shepherd Dog shows a devoted attachment to its master and is an excellent guard dog. Usually uh, people which 
uh, imagine the, this uh, breed behavior, are thinking that they are uh, very angry dogs. That's true when they guard their territory or uh, they must. At the same time, they are extremely affectionate with the family and its members, including small children. And uh, I would like to demonstrate you some pictures which uh, will give, give you the uh, real uh, attitude between the dogs and kids. We are saying about the moderate length of the neck, and this is definition, if the neck length is equal to the head length, as you can see, it is presented here. Uh, in front of you is the female. Oh, body, very well developed in all dimensions. Broad, well muscled and well balanced. What does it mean, well balanced body? As you remember, the balance or harmony is based on the correct proportions or correct ratio between spinal divisions. Now we will read the standard in, and keep in mind this ratio to one one with us. Well pronounced, uh, moderately long. Yes, this is true because of the uh, slant of the shoulder blade. Uh, the height at with us slightly exceeds the height of the rump. At with us, height at with us slightly exceeds height of the rump. Rump or, as we were we saying before, um, iliac tuber. Uh, back straight, broad, firm. Straight, broad, firm. Nothing about the length, but uh, wait please, just a little. Loin short, broad, slightly arched. And uh, finally, uh, croup. Moderately long, broad, rounded, slightly sloping to the root of the tail. Chest. Long, broad, well ribbed up, deep in general as well as in its frontal part. In cross section has broad oval shape, ribs well sprung, false ribs are long. The forechest is marked. And now let me draw your attention. In the standard is written, that the loin is short, croup is moderately long, and the chest is long. But the actual back or thoracic part of the spine is the upper part of the chest, of the brisket. That's why it should be long and it follows from the text because of the long chest. Long chest leads to the long back, to the long thoracic part which is a upper part of the brisket. A moderately long croup is because of the rather long sciatic bones. And I have to repeat that it doesn't contradict 
the statement of the short sacrum. Short sacrum. Sacrum is the upper part of the group. But pelvic bones, especially the sciatic bones, uh, provide the moderate length of the croup. Underline and belly. Belly moderately tucked up towards rear. Tail set on high. Circle curve or curled. In repose hanging down, reaching the hocks. When dog, the dog is alert, tail can be carried above the back line. Limbs. General appearance, well muscled. Viewed from front straight, parallel forelegs that are set fairly wide apart. So look at this dog in, dogs in front. And this is the illustration of the standard statement. Uh, set fairly wide apart. Fairly wide apart. Strongly muscled. Moderately long. Broad, slanting to the form an angle of uh, approximately 100 degrees with the upper arm. The shoulder blade lies close against the chest. Upper arm, strong and muscular, close fitting. Just a moment. To create correct, correct front angulation, as you remember, the elbow should be exactly under the withers. Otherwise, the optimal meaning of the humerus scapula will be not reached. So, length of the upper arm was not described in the standard. But anyway, nevertheless, it is mentioned that the angle between shoulder blade and the upper arm should be about one 100 degrees, so quite close to the right angle, or 90 degrees. Uh, elbow placed strictly back in parallel axis, turning neither in not, nor out. Forearm, straight, massive, Almost straight viewed from the front and the side. Um, uh, some mistake. If you see the dog from front, the pastels should be absolutely straight. From the side, side, they should be a little bit slanted forward. Otherwise, the flexibility of the limbs will be not provided, which is especially important when dog is landing. So, straight viewed from the front and slightly inclined forward, uh, forward viewed from the side. A forefeet, large, rounded in shape, a well arch, well knit, hind quarters. Viewed from the rear straight, standing parallel and moderately, moderately wide. The stifle and stifles and hocks sufficiently well angulated when viewed from the side. Uh, this is the real picture. This is with the skeleton. So look at the real dog here. Uh, sufficiently well angulated in styles and in hogs. And now we will see what is inside, just uh, a, little, a little bit later. A thigh, broad, well muscle to moderately long. Stifle, sufficiently well angulated. 
lower thigh broad, well muscled, moderately long. Hock joint broad and lean, sufficiently well bent. Firm, turning neither in nor out. Rare pasta, not long, massive, almost straight viewed from the front and uh, the side. Hind feet, large, rounded in shape, well arched, well neat. Now, <coughs> we will uh, analyze what is placed in front of us at the screen. We have already analyzed something regarding the uh, front part. Four quarter, and now about the hind quarter. Look, uh, normally upper thigh and sciatic bone have to create 90 degrees angle. Why? Because of the best function of the coxofemoral articulation. This angle provides the, the minimum efforts for the maximum work of this joint. But, beside that, the sciatic bone should be rather long. So, um, here, buttock should be quite, quite much uh, pronounced. This is important because here are located extensors, so unbending muscles, and uh, they need for the best function uh, more room. So a rather long sciatic bone is that's why required. Normally the lower thigh, the second thigh, is at least of the same length as the upper thigh or a little bit longer. You can found you can find the explanation of this statement in my book in the appropriate chapter. So, what we are able to find out in the real picture uh, is telling us about the sufficient angulations of the knee and hock. But what is inside looks a little bit more expressed because of the correct length and correct uh, set, correct slant of the upper thigh. This uh, gives the dog possibility to a little bit sit down on the knees and uh, that's why decrease height at the rump. Otherwise, we will find out of a built construction. So, I believe everything will be clear um, and we have to consider once again the principles which belong into the biomechanical model of the dog. Uh, postulate of two horizontal lines if you find it, then the front angulations and the rear angulations are in balance. And two red verticals, uh, if they are found, you can say that the meaning of the front and rear angulations for this concrete dog are optimal. 
uh, it is not easy to find out exactly this point because of the hair which covers quite uh, a lot body and limbs um, but anyway uh, the dog should not look or leggy or short legged the front leg is of normal length and norm is the half of the height at with us so two one one here and two one one here why normally shoulder blade and upper arm are of the same length that's why of the same contrary slant therefore the vertical projections are equal and remember this is the middle this is two if the whole height is four then it's easy to understand that here we can find one and one as well so the whole dog is built according to one one either longitudinally or vertically okay now you can understand just a moment you can understand how much we can find out using this model approach otherwise we could only repeat text of the standard and uh, give the comments uh, on the uh, uh, using the common sense uh, gate free elastic unhurried movement with a good driving power in the hind quarters good stability in all joints and with a good coordination the trot tends to be the typical movement the withers are on the same level as the rump and the back line is relatively stable during the movement one more time look at this picture and let me repeat please, repeat please the criteria I use when looking at the dog on the move this is the dog and for the eyes it's a very pleasant picture but let us analyze what prov what does provide our pleasure look correct top line firm top line a rump is not higher than the withers what happens quite often front and rest tries are of equal length so we can say that at this level uh, this is the balanced movement uh, probably I have to repeat everything what it was saying about the movement okay so in front of you there is the same dog from the right what we see from outside and from the late uh, left what we can see from inside uh, the picture of the right the dog's dog moves nicely and we are really pleased to see this very well balanced movement what does it mean what criteria we have to use to explain this result let me repeat you again as i did uh, in the previous lectures so the top line is firm everything is fine and a rump is not higher than the width how it should be almost at the same level the limbs uh, provide the steps of equal length front stride and hind stride are equal the legs from the opposite side 
are converging to the base of the vertical, lowered from the point of inter intersection, because here is located the center of gravity. And uh, this position provides the best stability of the movement and minimize wobbling of the group. Next one. The limbs and they spun inscribes in the right angle when the dog is close to the ground. And the last one, that the eye and paw of the front legs uh, when landing uh, belong to one vertical line. So this complex provides, provides uh, the fully balanced movement and explains from inside what does it mean impression we have visually. So, dear participants, every time telling about the, our native breeds, I use the same approach. And uh, I believe you are now uh, agree with me, and I believe I convinced you that this approach is universal and you can use it in any breeds and it will increase the objectivity of your assessment. Okay. Uh, there is a small part we have to read in the standard. Uh, concerning skin, Thick, sufficiently elastic, without any folds and wrinkles. Coat, hair, straight, coarse, standard of coat, with well-developed undercoat. The length of the guard coat, as well as the undercoat, should not be less than 5 centimeters. The coat on the head and the forelegs is shorter and thicker. The tail is completely covered with a dense, dense coat, uh, and looks thick and furry. The longer outer coat forms brushes on the ears. There are no ears here, they're docked, uh, sorry, cropped. And the mane around the neck. And the trousers, trousers on the back sides, on the, uh, on the uh, limbs. Uh, a color, any solid color, pie, bold, or spotted color, except the solid black, diluted black or black in any combination, or genetic blue or liver brown color. About genetic blue and liver brown, I have already told you how we should qualify it. Size and weight, males, desirable height, 70 to 75, uh, minimum 68. Females, desirable height, 67, 70, minimum 64. Larger statue is accepted as long as the confirmation is harmonic. Weight, minimum 54 males and 45 for females. False. I will not read the usual uh, usual sentence. It's well known for everybody. Uh, and uh, now severe faults: too light or too coarse in build, lack of self confidence, deviations in the sexual dimorphism, head small in proportions to the body, light, narrow, long coarse, blocky, or apple head, abrupt stop, muzzle, down-faced, dish-faced, or snipey, teeth too small, widely spaced, incisors not set in one line, any deviation from the dental formula, except the absence of the PM once, insufficiently marks cheekbones, eyes large, bulging, very light, showing haw, slack eyelids, ears large, thin or set to low, top line roach or sway back, long, 
sagging or arched loin, a rump higher than the withers. Body square, too cobby, too long, narrow in both front and rear, too leggy, chest very short, flat or shallow, croup short or steep, stumped tail. Weak bone, muscles and ligaments in the joints. Lacking correct angulations. Both forearms. Unbalanced movement. Lack of driving power in the hind quarters. Coat that is very soft, curly, has very short guard coat or no undercoat. Disqualifying faults. Aggressive or overly shy dogs. Any dogs clearly showing physical or behavioral abnormalities. Any deviation from the required bite. Incomplete dental formula, absence of any uh, tooth except the third molars or first premolars. Entropion, wall eyes, deep blue, green shaded or eyes of different color, docked tail, constant pacing or impossibility to access the gate. Uh, sorry, assess the gate. Black color in any variation, solid, diluted, piebald, spotted, or as saddle except the mask. <coughs> Genetic blue color in any variation or nuance. Bluish gray pigmented nose, lips, and eye rims. Genetic brown color in any variation or nuance. Genetic brown nose, lips, and eye rims. Ten markings in black, blue, or brown dogs. Height below minimum. Severe deviations in the sexual dimorphism in males. And this is the end of the standard. Okay. So, we read the standard, we analyzed some points which are important for the correct understanding of the specific of the breed, of its construction, of, of, of its harmony. Uh, now, let us go to the pictures to the photos and let us describe what we will find there one more time I would like to repeat that I will not evaluate the dogs I will evaluate the pictures of the dogs which are uh, catched at this concrete moment Catched by camera, I mean. Let us take a look at this heads pictured from, uh, from the side. It's difficult to say if this head is big enough, because we do not see the body and cannot compare size of the head with the size uh, and massiveness of the body. In shape is quite correct, correct um, proportion between muzzle and skull, just a little uh, too rounded skull, not only forehead, but uh, all the skull. Um, the rest is quite okay, dark eyes, well pigmented lips, uh, black nose, ears are cropped, so nothing about the shape, and the feathering because they are docked as it uh, uh, quite uh, typical for our country. Uh, this head, strong and massive. Uh, the line of the nose, bridge of the nose, and the plane of the skull are not quite parallel. A little bit convergent and stop a little bit too much. Too much. Compare with this. 
this is the stop. Uh, this is the superiorly ridge. And this is the actual stop. A bit too much. A bit too rounded. A little bit converging lines. This head is should be more strong in general, more massive. Uh, either the skull or the muzzle. Muzzle a little bit too long and not deep enough, a little bit too light in general. A stop is quite okay. Needs stronger under jaw. Uh, uh, leather of the nose is brownish, but it is the pale um, colored dogs. But the rims is uh, looks practically in black. Dark eyes, uh, quite dark eye rims, dark lips. But in general, too light. In ge in general, too light. With a light muzzle and light underjaw. Stop is too much. This is a, a quite nice strong head with the correct proportions between muzzle and skull. A bit too rounded skull, but nice stop, deep muzzle, a correct, correctly cut lips. Excellent pigmentation of the nose, lips, and eye rims. Quite dark eyes, high set ears, massive head with a flat over skull, with a wide muzzle at the root, with a wide uh, bridge of the nose, and in general, wide muzzle. Uh, Ears are set wide apart. I cannot say to you exactly, but they're a bit too light. Maybe it is because of also of the sun, but they are looking not dark enough. Uh, black nose, black eye rims, black lips, high set ears, and in general, nice head and nice expression. You can see immediately how um, is changing the um, uh, appearance of the head when ears are not cropped. Uh, even the head is of a nice shape. And I have to repeat the same what I was saying about this dog. Flat over skull, wide in cheekbone. Uh, wide enough set apart ears, wide muzzle at the root. Uh, difficult to say if it's tapering uh, um, moderately or maybe too much. Difficult to say because of the angle of the picturing. But uh, anyway, nice head in general and quite unusual expression because of the natural ears. Also very nice heads. Uh, massive. You can compare with the uh, chest. Wide in cheekbones, flat of a skull, wide at the root of the muzzle, wide, uh, wide muzzle. I cannot uh, tell if the nose is black because of the uh, wrong color transmission. But anyway, dark eyes, dark probably black eye rims, and for sure black uh, lips. Uh, rather high set, yes, compared to this. Very nice head. Massive wide in cheekbones, flat in the skull, uh, wide at the root of the muzzle, um, powerful muzzle, um, black nose, 
black eye rims, dark eyes, dark pigmentation of the lips. Long-bodied dog, uh, strong enough in bones, uh, with a good depth of the body, uh, massive enough. Um, it seems to be that the spinal proportions are correct if we look at the um, borders of the this uh, shadow placed in the lumbar part. This is the last rib. Uh, we are following this uh, arch and it seems to be that this is the middle of the spine. This is the inner part of the upper thigh and the upper thigh of the iliac bone and this is the iliac tuber. So it seems to be that the spinal proportions two, one, one are presented. Uh, dogs, dog looks a little bit short-legged. But um, it could be several reasons for that. And one of that is soft pastons. If these pastons will be more upright, the length of the foreleg will increase and this proportion will be changed. But anyway, what we can see, long-bodied, massive enough, strong enough bone, boned, um, a bit short-legged. Head is the main problem. Head should be more massive. Uh, this is the flat of a skull, but too sharp, too abrupt stop. And muzzle is rather long and with a Roman nose, which is not typical. Also, shape of the muzzle is not correct and the jaw is not is developed not enough and cut of the lips is acute let us look at the angulations shoulder blade upper arm elbow is exactly under the width uh, hip joint iliac tuber iliac tuber and uh, knee joint. This is a vertical line in front of the rear leg. This is the tail set and the vertical line from the tail set is coming down through the knee joint. It is the uh, front part of the joint and it is the actual joint. It is correct. So, uh, upper thigh is uh, about the, is, uh, upper thigh length is correct and it is slant is correct. A little bit slanted forward. And this is the second thigh. Second thigh is of a good length, but it looks, if we're looking uh, at this contour, it looks only enough angulated. But anyway, the angulation is quite sufficient. It is it, like it is written in the standard. Sufficient angulated knee and hook. So, uh, coat condition is not for the show but it, it is probably working dog so we should be not surprised to find out uh, this coat condition look at this dog very nice dog in general uh, quite long bodied deep chested massive with a strong head of a nice shape uh, top line from the neck runs through um, pronounced with us um, 
level back a little bit how it should be rounded uh, sacrum this is the tail set uh, deep chest how uh, broad is it difficult to say it's because we see almost the profile picture of the dog. Uh, beautiful head. Uh, large, massive, with an excellent shape. Look, absolutely correct proportions between muzzle and skull. Moderately pronounced stop. It looks a little bit more pronounced than uh, it is because of the superciliary ridge. Black nose, dark eyes, black eye ribs, black pigmentation of the lips, high set ears, very typical expression, massive, rather low set, moderate of the length neck, uh, shoulder blade is obliquely set, quite long. Um, upper arm could be uh, more oblique, a little bit open the humerus scapula angulation, and uh, a bit too soft pastures. Absolutely correct angulated the rear. You can see, this is the upper thigh, this is the sciatic bone, they are perpendicular, this is the stifle, this is the upper thigh, moderately pronounced uh, knee angulation, as well as moderately angulated hock. Excellent developed heel. Doc is quite strong in bones. Uh, quite okay is his coat condition. And that's it. And this is a different example of the breed. Moderately long bodied, overbuilt, strong enough in bones large enough head with a rounded skull to pronounce stop uh, muzzle um, is incorrect proportion to the skull but a bit snipey a bit uh, acute cut this uh, shape should be much more blunt and all the head should be larger and stronger and more massive. High set neck, maybe it's resulted by the header, but we can see what we see. Uh, well developed with us, a strong back, but too high rump. Dog is overbuilt. Deep chest, four chest practically missing, very open. Uh, angulation in humerus scapula. Uh, straight and qu quite massive for legs, but pastels are soft and uh, feet are too long and they have to be rounded and arched. Uh, let us see the rear. This is the Humeral scapula, this is, and this is the hips. How goes this line? It's not horizontal. Why? Because of the short and uh, uh, steep set upper arm. And this is the second thigh. Also, length is not sufficient. All articulations are straightened. And uh, this position of the upper side is the cause of the overbuilt construction. Not the best specimen of the breed. 
let's go on. Uh, this is the probably bitch. Long bodied, short legged, with a good bones and solid body. Uh, head is uh, for the beach, even for the beach, it should be larger and more massive. Uh, two pronounced stop, a little bit converging lines of the uh, muzzle and the skull, they have to be parallel. Um, a little bit too long muzzle, try to compare with the skull. Uh, Nevertheless, uh, muzzle is deep. Long neck, excellent top line. Deep chest, uh, somewhat prominent forward chest. Straight in front, look at the upper arm. This is the shoulder blade and this is the upper arm. Straight in front, short in forearms and soft in pastels about the hind legs. Uh, this is the hip. This is the upper thigh. This is the lower thigh. This is the rear past. It looks correct. Let us try to imagine uh, the disposition of our uh, horizontal lines. Humerus scapula and uh, hip joint, almost parallel, almost horizontal. This is the level of the elbow. This is the level. This is the ulna and this is the joint. It looks correctly. So, the most um, expressed uh, demerits are that the dog is pitch is short-legged, head should be larger, stop should be less pronounced, um, lines of profile should be parallel, and the front angulation should be better. So, let's just take a look. Uh, dog are placed not in profile, so we, we will say only about that uh, features which are visible for sure. Uh, a medium long body dog with a good depth of the body, with a strong bend. Uh, large enough head should be stronger, more massive, with a stronger muzzle, with a more blunt cut lips and uh, uh, with a stronger underjaw. Anyway, a uh, long massive neck, pronounced with us, correct top line, uh, well-developed chest and fore chest. Um, difficult to say about the angulation because of the angle of the uh, picturing of this dog. This one. Um, slightly long bodied, strong in bones, deep enough in chest. Head should be larger, more massive, with a stronger muzzle, with a <coughs> more blunt cut uh, upper lip, strong enough under jaw, medium long neck, a bit soft back. Uh, chest should be deeper. Look, this is the ulna, and chest should be uh, should reach the elbow joint. Uh, it looks quite uh, okay, front and uh, front angulation. In uh, in the rear, <coughs> stifle could be expressed better. So let us take a look. This is the hip joint and this is the upper thigh. It should be set more oblique and it is set almost upright. That's why <coughs> uh, 
its length is not enough, that dog could set a little bit on its knees, knees, and that's why lower the rump. Uh, coat condition, either here or here, is can is uh, sufficient. This is um, undercoat. It seems to be at least, and uh, this dog is in shading. Shading. We have seen already these pictures when we focused our attention to the front limbs. Now about other details. Head should be larger and more massive, as well as the muzzle at the yeah. root should be wider and should be wider in general muzzle itself. Uh, this is the uh, nice head, a bit too rounded skull, uh, quite wide in the cheekbones, quite, not uh, excellent, but uh, quite acceptable. Uh, eyes could be set up more apart. Uh, strong enough muzzle, it seems to be that this is the bitch. Uh, um, black nose, black, dark eyes, black eye rims, black lips, and the coat condition is also not for the show. This is the dog on the move. So, uh, let us now use the tool uh, which was considered in the model approach. Let us see. Excellent level top line, firm top line, from the withers to the tail set, with no any sign to high rump. Absolutely correct. Uh, let us compare the strides, front and uh, rear. They're practically equal. Um, the uh, right angle, practically the span of the limbs matches it. Um, the moment of the um, dog when it was pictured uh, is uh, not the final. So, uh, the front leg is uh, in the air, is hanging, and the hind leg, uh, which has to take the way of the body, and the uh, certain uh, stage is a little bit behind this point. So, but anyway, it is very close to this vertical. How do I find it? Look at the shoulder blade. This is the line. Look, this is the hip. This is the iliac tuber. And uh, this is a point of interse intersection, exactly above this point uh, to which uh, these le limbs are converging. So, eye and uh, paw of the front leg um, reaching uh, for landing on the vertical line. So, we can use all our criteria to explain what is good in this dog on the move. Uh, besides that, that, we can look at the head. Head is uh, massive enough and the stop looks a little bit uh, a little bit too how should I say it in English better? It should be a little bit better pronounced. Um, maybe superciliary regions should be a little bit better pronounced. 
eyes could be darker. Quite nice profile of the muzzle. Uh, excellent pigmented lips. Uh, black eye rims. High set ears. Nice dog. Coat is uh, not in the full condition. What does belong to the merits? Strong top line, deep chest, uh, correct uh, uh, ratio between the front and the rest, right, which are equal. Uh, correct placement of the um, limbs from the opposite side converging to the base of the vertical line where center of gravity is located we can uh, imagine how it creates correct uh, Paw of the front leg is exactly under the eye. Uh, this is the practically right angle. What is what does belong to demerits? Let me see exactly details of the head. The head is quite massive with two around its skull and a little bit convergent lines of the uh, bridge of the nose and uh, skull, uh, skull. A bit too deep stop. Uh, muzzle should be more blunt. Uh, next demerit is the sloping croup and low tail set and we cannot see the tail which normally as this is the dog should be curled about the top line and the tail is here this dog everything is fine except some faults what is fine uh, Solid body, dog is massive and long body, deep chested, quite strong in bones, could be stronger but it's acceptable. With a quite large head, muzzle could be a little bit stronger and more blunt in shape, um, seen uh, in profile. but. Upper lines of profile are correct, and the ratio between muzzle and skull are correct. Correct stop. Dark eyes. Dark pigmentation. It seems to be black nose. Uh, neck of a good length, low set, low carried. Excellent top line from withers to the iliac tuber. A bit too sloping croup, a bit too low set tail. Uh, correct front angulation, which could be uh, proved by the last criterion, criterion of the vertical line, you can see. Eye and the paw of the front leg, which is ready to be landed uh, uh, on one vertical line. but. What is the fault? Length of the front strides are not equal. That means that the front angulation is okay, correct. And the hind angulation is only enough because when articulation are articulations of the hind legs are unbent, nevertheless, the rest right is short in the comparison to the front stride. So, what you that you can see how we use the, our tool. In general, 
This dock is, this is the beach. This beach is too light. Long bodied, a bit too leggy, massive enough, with them um, strong enough bones. It's uh, difficult to say about the head because it's pictured not, uh, it is pictured not in profile, but even in this case, we can say that the head should be larger, more massive, with a stronger muzzle. Um, correct length and uh, set of the neck, strong enough top line, a bit low set tail, it should be more curled over the back, and is the sign of the temperament. Even she looks bright. Maybe it is the moment which is sketched accidentally. And in this case, we cannot find equality of the front strides. Look, compare this stride and that one. And this point is not under the center of equilibrium, center of gravity. Let us see. This is the line along the median line. This is the line connecting hip and iliac tuber. And this is a point of intersection. And base of this vertical line will be here, exactly in the middle of this span. So, and also code condition is not for the show. What we can say using our tools. Uh, this probably is the beach. Long bodied, uh, deep chested, with a strong top line, with strong enough bones, uh, very slow and uh, more than unhurrable movement. Slow movement, uh, lazy movement uh, with the not typical temperament for this breed. Look, uh, the uh, dog looks very sad. Very low set neck. Head is um, quite large. Even the muzzle could be stronger and the uh, shape of the uh, lips could be more cut. Excellent top line, hanging tail, which is the sign of the temperament, not typical for the Caucasian. And uh, uh, limbs, the <laughs> movement is also very lazy. They cannot reach the base of the vertical, both either front or rear. And the front leg doesn't reach the vertical lowered from the eye. So, this is about this bit. Maybe it is a puppy. Who knows? I don't know. And for the puppy, it could be, because they are not adapted to the show atmosphere, and it could be not shy, but uh, not brave enough. One more time, pictures of the friendship between kid, uh, children and uh, dogs. One more time, please pay attention, both are childs. Uh, both are children. Uh, next one, please. О, а, тогда все. У нас остались только эти дети. Только дети. Да. Окей, okay, dear colleagues. It was a story about the Caucasian Shepherd Dog. And uh, I hope that the image of this breed now you can 
imagine better. And I believe that the details of the, the confirmation could be better checked when using tools either biomechanical or harmonic I told about. Uh, I believe that this approach uh, you can share with me when uh, you will uh, judging or breathing. And uh, I wish you great success on this way. Uh, my lecture about the Caucasian Shepherd is ready, but anyway, should you have any questions, uh, I will be very pleased to answer. Looking forward to hearing from you. Let's say what we will have next time. Okay. Tuesday. Okay, if you have, uh, if you don't have any questions, I'm very glad. I believe that my explanation was exhaustive and uh, was directed to include any misinterpretations. Uh, next time, uh, to be continued with the South Russian Shepherd Dog. It is also prepared it is also prepared in the same way and one more time i would like to thank beautiful very talented designer uh, whose uh, uh, pictures you could see today and in the previous lectures i would like also to thank all breeders who sent me the pictures of the dogs uh, which help us to have correct um, opinion about the ideal dogs and uh, dogs with the real uh, faults thank you very much and uh, all uh, to all participants thank you very much for your attention to our native breeds and to your patience, because uh, the uh, tell out probably was sometimes sophisticated, but uh, uh, from time to time using the same method, I believe that uh, you are already adapted to this way. Uh, thank you for your patience anyway. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, very, thank you very much to our speaker. And then say, see you next Tuesday. Спасибо большое, Евгений Львович. Спасибо, Катюш. Спасибо. Всем до свидания. Bye. All the best.